Hey, welcome back to Pop Culture Graveyard. I am Hollis, and today I'm going to be tackling one of my favorite bands on the SST label, Firehose. For the uninitiated, Firehose rose from the ashes of the Minutemen, another great SST band. When Dee Boone, the visionary singer and guitarist from the Minutemen, died in a tragic van accident, bassist Mike Watt and drummer George Hurley were inconsolable and weren't planning on playing music again, at least for a long while. But Ed Crawford, a rabid Minuteman fan from Ohio, aka Ed from Ohio, barged his way into the San Pedro home of Mike Watt and forced him and George Hurley to jam with him. The resulting chemistry was obvious and Mike and George decided to carry on playing music with Ed as Firehose. Not to be disrespectful of the Minutemen's legacy, but the music of Firehose takes the next logical step in evolution. If Dee Boone had never died, I could have seen him taking the band in a similar direction and winding up with a sound not unlike Firehose. That's one of the many things I love about this band. Ed didn't force the boys into a corner of music that they were not well suited to play. They melded their styles together effortlessly to create a new sound. Please join me for an exploration of this sound as I do a deep dive into Firehose. In 1986, Firehose put out Ragin' Full On. This album was produced by Ethan James, the same man who produced the Minutemen's classic Double Nickels on the Dime. And similarly, he did a great job on this. The leadoff track, Brave Captain, is everything great about the Minutemen in one song. It was the first song released by the band, and the video to Brave Captain was my introduction to Firehose. I used to take the show 120 minutes on MTV, and the video to Brave Captain stuck out like a calloused bass playing thumb, in a good way, among all the glossy, pretty, cinematic vignettes that were the other 80s music videos of the time. Their video looked like it cost 75 bucks to make, but it was interesting, and it showed a lot of the band's personality. Pure Econo. Econo is a word that Mike Watt uses and has since the Minutemen days with Dee Boone to symbolize a no-frills approach to both music and life. The song itself kicks off with a scratchy guitar coming to life that to my ear sounds an awful lot like Dee Boone starting his car at the beginning of Anxious Mofo by the Minutemen. That's probably just in my head, but I see it as a very fitting connection. The song itself is a hectic rhythm roller coaster with vaguely militaristic lyrics that follow a sort of circuitous logic but who mainly exists simply to punctuate the fantastic musical hooks. Brave Captain is easily a top 10 Firehose song for me. I know what I'll do. I'll put my top 10 Firehose songs in the description below. The next song, Under the Influence of Meat Puppets, which name checks another great SST band of its day, pairs a virtuoso musical performance with a spoken word piece that appears at the outro of the song. Mike Watt wrote the track with his wife at the time, Kira Rossler, the wonderful bassist from Black Flag. Kira actually co-wrote six of the songs on this album. The next song, It Matters, feels very much like a page ripped out of the Minutemen playbook in both composition and execution. I don't mean to constantly compare Firehose to Minutemen, but it is impossible not to hear the DNA of that band in everything Firehose brings to the table. The next song, Chemical Wire, alternates between rolling sonic blasts and delicate finger-picking guitar. As is typical of lyrics written by Mike Watt, there are dense rhyme schemes and impenetrable meanings, but I think it's a song about arson. It segues seamlessly into Mike's Another Theory Shot to Shit, which brings some quiet to the LP and more spoken lyrics. And this finds the band for the first time feeling around for their version of a ballad. On Your Knees was written by George and Ed, which makes total sense given the relentless drum pattern that lulls you to sleep before the musical explosion. The song Locked In houses Ed's prettiest vocal on the album, as well as some of Mike Watt's most melodic bass work. Yeah, I know that's saying something. It's a killer ending to Side 1. Side 2 kicks off with another personal favorite, The Candle and the Flame. And I must admit, the opening bass work reminds me a lot of Spinal Tap Mark II's Jazz Odyssey. On the bass, Derek Smalls. He wrote this. The song Choose Any Memory is a great Ed song that at times reminds me of R.E.M. And to me, its lyrics suggest an extraterrestrial that wants to call home. The song Perfect Pairs marries an incessant bass line 
to lyrics about the impossibilities of life. Karen's is a wonderful track that really hammers home the band's trademark sound. It's rubbery and freewheeling, featuring whiplash guitar accents and lyrics about building a church. Relating Dudes to Jazz is one of the most satisfying songs on this LP. It's an up-tempo mind bender of a track with lyrics that name check SST artist and Mike Watt friend Raymond Pettibon. Check out George Hurley's drumming on this track and you'll see how criminally underrated he truly is. Things Could Turn Around ends this LP with one of Firehose's most beautiful songs and courtesy of Kira, some of the band's most affecting lyrics. All in all, I would have to call this Firehose's best album. I'm very big on songs. Even though the band put out more cohesive albums, this is the best collection of songs, in my opinion, that the band put out. There is something magical about this album. You can call it the D. Boone effect. I believe his spirit is all over this. This album is, of course, dedicated to D. Boone, as is the case with all subsequent Firehose albums, and every album Mike Watt ever put out. Anyone who is Firehose curious, should begin here with Rage in Full On. In November of 1987, the band dropped Ifin, that's right, I-F apostrophe N. Ethan James produced this album as well. This odd album design features a few pictures that you can make out. One is of Mike Watts sleeping, the other is of Firehose playing live, and most prominently, a picture of fellow SST band Husker Du. The liner notes thanks the Huskers and credits them as cover models. There's something interesting going on on the label as well. One side has all the songs on both sides. The other side of the label is an autograph that was given to Mike Watt from John Fogarty of Creedence Clearwater Revival. It says to Mike, keep on keeping on. Good luck, John Fogarty. Mike Watt in particular, and his earlier band, The Minutemen especially, were some of the very few punks to embrace Creedence Clearwater Revival. Not just their music, but their working man's aesthetic, right down to their flannel shirts. And Firehose, not unlike Creedence Clearwater Revival, are every inch in American band. The LP kicks off with Sometimes, a song about a guy with wanderlust that is, in my opinion, the best song on the album. Ed's in great voice, and Mike's thunder broom, which is what he calls his bass, is holding down the bottom with authority. The song Sometimes got its own release on SST. This is a 12-inch release that plays at 45 RPM. The first track Sometimes is the same version that you find on Ifin, but it features two bonus tracks, She Paints Pictures and Ryman Spielin. Because he doesn't sing, Spielin is what Mike Watt does. It's talking to dudes. Relating. Spieling. I believe it's like got a Yiddish origin. Spieling. But Mike made it his own. The last two songs were recorded at the same sessions as Ifin, but were left off the album. So those are bonus tracks. What I find interesting is in the liner notes to this album, the band thanks everyone from Bobby Dylan to Pete Townsend to basketball star James Worthy. Anyway, Sometimes is followed on the album by Hear Me which is a quick hitter that reminds me at times of Minutemen at their funkiest. The next track, Honey Please, sounds like it should have been a hit. It bounces and swings as much as anything by the Stray Cats, and it's possibly Ed's finest lead vocal up to this point. Backroads is a cryptic little song about dodging arrows, either figuratively or literally. Could be a deliverance deal. From One Comes One, on the other hand, is a full-on head-scratcher. The lyrics state, From One Comes One, try and prove this song by loading it into a Central American gun. Or quit my army. What? Making the Freeway is the next song, and it's another favorite. Remember, Mike Watt doesn't sing. He does what he calls spiels. He sounds his most soulful here, and Making the Freeway is perhaps his best spiel from a performance standpoint. Anger is a pretty straightforward song about the titular emotion, with hectic music to match its intensity. Side 2 kicks off with For the Singer of R.E.M. This is a fantastic song, and very evocative of some of R.E.M.'s early work, and there's a reason for that. Back when R.E.M. were putting out their document album, R.E.M.'s lead singer, Michael Stipe, was considering releasing a solo album. So Mike Watt wrote this song for Michael Stipe to sing. Michael Stipe ended up not doing a solo album, so Firehose does the song here. And thanks to Ed's wonderful vocal performance, I can picture R.E.M. doing the song. Operation Solitaire proves that I enjoy Mike's spiels much more 
when they're over gentle music. Windmilling is another great Ed song with some rhythmically righteous guitar work. Me and You Remembering is a joke song whose highlight is that Richard Hell is continually referred to as Dick Hell. You had to be there. In Memory of Elizabeth Cotton is a lovely, tender song, and it eulogizes the great blues guitarist who died the very year this album came out. The song also features gorgeous backing vocals by Frank, P-H-R-A-N-C. Remember her? The song soon has George Hurley's best drumming on the entire album. He's almost Chuck Biscuits-like. Thunder Child is an odd yet jazzy way to end this album, with more tasty drum rolls from George, and almost Black Sabbath heavy bass from Mike. All in all, a solid album with some really nice variety. Sorry, wardrobe change. It's very hot under these Hollywood lights. At this point, I just want to ask if you're enjoying the show, please do me a favor and click the like button. And if you'd like to support the show even further, please consider joining my Patreon. It's at patreon.com forward slash Pop Culture Graveyard. In 1989, the band released From Ohio. The album title refers to the fact that this whole album was recorded in Ed's home state of Ohio. Something you should know about this album, Mike Watt's wife Kira is listed on guitar and vocals for the whole album. Pretty much a full-fledged member of the band. How cool is that? By the way, on a personal note, I tore this apartment up and could not find my From Ohio album. It's here somewhere. It's going to turn up once I upload the episode. That's how this usually goes. All the vinyl collectors out there can feel my pain. I was tripping over that album for years before doing this episode, and now I can't find it. Anyway, Riddle of the 80s kicks off this album, and it's an easy-on-the-ears tune that has a slight down-home country feel to it, which is not a bad thing. That segues seamlessly into In My Mind, a song with some of Ed and Kira's best layered guitar work. It's even got a bit of a Latin feel to it. Just a delightful track. Mike Watt's bass is front and center for Whisperin' While Hollerin', a really jazzy joint that's funky as hell. And the song shows just how far Ed's come as a frontman, as he's practically scatting on this one. Vestipole is a slight instrumental that sounds like it was left off exile on Main Street by the Stones at the very last minute. Mas Cajones is a real triumph for the rhythm section, who lay down one of the stankiest musical beds on this album, underneath Ed's wails and Mike's spiels. What Gets Heard is one of my favorite tracks on the album. It's an up-tempo rocker with squealing guitar licks from Ed. This became a concert staple for the band. Though Mike handles the vocals on this album version, when performed live, Ed would sing the vocals. And honestly, I prefer all live versions of this song over the album version. That said, the album version still rocks. Let the Drummer Have Some is exactly what it sounds like, a very brief, subdued, early solo drum track. Liberty for Our Friend comes across as a drunken sea shanty via San Pedro. The track Time With You sounds way more conventional than the band's other work, and I could really imagine it having crossover appeal to regular radio at the time. The track Ifin, which for some reason wasn't on the album Ifin, has very cryptic lyrics and disjointed music. Some Things is a great song but it highlights something that I feel I should again stress about all Firehose songs, and that's that the lyrics are secondary to the music. Don't get me wrong, the band can write great lyrics, but great lyrics don't always add up to great meaning. Sometimes they do, but for Firehose, the meaning is in the music. The words, mostly, are a device. For example, these lyrics in some things, 50 dudes are forced to choose, 50 tools for them to use, 50 dudes, 50 tools, 50 choices, 50 rules. Uh, what now? Understanding is a surprisingly sweet song about that elusive feeling in the song title. Nuff That Shit George is another short drum solo. The album ends on The Softest Hammer, which is a fantastic title given the power ballad nature of the song. Surprisingly, you might find yourself reaching for this Firehose album more often than the rest. Because even though it might not have as many great songs as other Firehose albums, it might just be the most consistently enjoyable listen of any of them. In 1991, the band dropped Fly in the Flannel. Truth in Advertising, the cover shows a close-up of a flannel shirt, the official uniform of Mike Watt, and the symbol of hard work popularized by Mike's working-class hero, John Fogarty. Boys moved up to the big leagues in this album, their first LP from major label Columbia, and it's got two of my top ten Firehose songs on it. One kicks off the album, down with the bass. And it's exactly the kind of song every Firehose fan hopes for 
when they get a new fire hose album, put it on the platter and put the needle down on track one. Funky bass, roaring guitars, punishing drumming, and some of the coolest lyrics the band had yet recorded. Better get it when you get hit, rolling around on the floor out the door up the stairway where the chumps play, kicking them down and finding it found on the carpet where the pump fit, a bass in your face with a sign for your mind saying down, I'm down, down with the bass. Down with the bass is the ultimate theme song from Mike Watt, Mr. Thunderbroom himself and probably the best Firehose song Mike ever wrote. The song Up Finnegan's Ladder has the great line, get intense with feeling and spiel for the dudes, but fucking make it Econo. How great is that? Mike Watt continually championing Econo as a virtue in both his music and his life. He is nothing if not consistent. The song Can't Believe is my other favorite on this album. Written by Ed from Ohio, this track is a simple, carefree love song where the subject is left speechless and puzzled by the depth of his lady's effect on him. And it's just so damn hooky. There's something so appealing the way Ed effortlessly syncs up his vocal wails and his guitar wails. Such a good song. Up next is Walking the Cow, which is a cover of a Daniel Johnston song. Any Daniel Johnston fans might not be too happy with this cover, as it's not as faithful to the original. But Firehose truly make it their own, and bring out the musical possibilities in the song. And if you don't know Daniel Johnston, as an introduction to his work, you could do a lot worse. The band went as far as to make a video for Walking the Cow. It was actually made by a guy named Phil Harder, and it's a pretty interesting video. But unfortunately, its ending was deemed too violent for MTV. Intrigued? I'll put a link below. The title track, Fly in the Flannel, is a kick-ass song, alternating between delicate guitar picking and sinister riffage, with lyrics that tout the band's working-class aesthetic. The track Epoxy, for example, has the type of lyrics at which the Minutemen used to excel. The song's subject equates his struggles at interpersonal communication with trying to bridge a canyon with epoxy. Over to Town of Pedro is a personal favorite. It is my deep cut on this album. The rhythm section kills it on this one. It just sounds so damn epic and apocalyptic, and the song is almost cinematic in its effect. The first cuss kicks off side two, and it's got Ed's best guitar solo on the entire album. If nothing else, the next song proves that Mike Watt is cooler than any other guy in the indie scene, because none of them ever wrote a song called Anti-Misogyny Maneuver. Tulin is a sweet song about the carefree joys of driving. Song for Dave Albin, who was the lead guitarist and songwriter for The Blasters, always struck me as not that great a song. At least not as good of a song as Alvin deserves dedicated to him. Lost Colors is a wonderfully cryptic song with some of the most thrilling music on the LP. And Ed's guitar sounds almost Middle Eastern at times. Losers, Boozers, and Heroes ends this album on a sour note, a dirge-like character study of Heartland folks. It's long on lyrics and short on musical inspiration. Fly in the Flannel was a great first step on their major label journey. Unfortunately, their next LP really had to be a step forward from this if they wanted to continue to play in the major leagues. In 1993, the band released Mr. Machinery Operator. Terrible album cover. Terrible. You know I'm big on album covers. I feel it's the difference between an album getting what it deserves and an album becoming marginalized. This is a terrible cover. This album was produced by Jane Maskus from Dinosaur Jr. And oddly enough, given Dinosaur Jr.'s music, he gets the cleanest sound out of the band yet. This was the band's second album and last for Columbia Records. This album very much has the feel of a Viking funeral. It seemed like the band knew the writing was on the wall and they could not sustain themselves on a major label. So they simply put out the album they wanted to make using a lot of their friends from the indie scene. Mike Watt's friend, Raymond Pettibon, is also listed as a lyricist. If possible, this is both an underrated album and a lackluster album. There are high points on this album, but they're fewer and far between. Album opener, Formal Introduction, is a fun galloping track. The song is very unique, as Mike actually sings on it rather than spiels. He even drops a couple of F-bombs, which earn the band the parental advisory sticker on the cover. By the way, this sticker was a mark of quality when I was a young buck. The next song, Blaze, is a great track and my favorite on the album. It features wonderfully foggy bass guitar from Ed, believe it or not, and a fiery solo by Jay Maskus on bass. You know it's a unique track. 
when the bass of Mike is overshadowed by two other people on it. The band ended up making a video for the song Blaze, and it's terrific. I'm going to put a link below. From D. Boone to Kira to Jay Maskus, the video is a snapshot of the people, places, and things, both past and present, that meant a lot to the band. Herded Into Pools is a very odd two-hander of a track that sees Ed and Mike trading off vocal parts. Witness is a wonderful track with Ed's most tender vocal on this LP. Ed has come a long way as a vocalist from the first album, and the backing vocals are gorgeous, provided by both Jay Maskus and Vicky Peterson from The Bangles. Number seven is a short instrumental written by Kira, powerful hankering features some of the heaviest guitar on the album, but with some of Mike's most bizarre warbled vocals, almost like something off of Trout Mask Replica. The combination shouldn't work, but it kinda does? Rocket Sled slash Fuel Tank is the most punk rock song on this album. That is, if Rush played punk rock. Songs like this serve as a reminder that Jay Maskus was exactly the right producer for this album. In lesser hands, that song might have been a mess. The song Quicksand sees Mike half sing, half spiel over some epic music. The song, by the way, was written by Tony and Chip Kinman, the punk rock brothers who founded the bands The Dills and Drank and File. The next track is Disciples of the Three-Way, and I really hope that this song is about a power trio and not about holy men who made a menage a trois their religion. The song is actually pretty cool, and it even pays tribute to the late great D. Boone. More famous quotes may be the most fun George solo drum track on any of the LPs. It begins with A&R man Jim Dunbar, the very man who signed Firehose to Columbia Records. And Jim says the word, quote, after which George Hurley lays down a really tasty hip-hop drum beat until Jim returns and says, unquote. The song Sincerely was written by both Mike and Kira, and this strange track lulls you to sleep with its atonal arrangement, not unlike a Jandex song, until about the two-minute mark, where it explodes into a frenzied pocket before returning back to Jandex Central for the outro. The track Hellhole, which unfortunately isn't a Spinal Tap cover, was written by Ed and George, and features guest vocalist Frida Rente, who has a beautiful, soulful voice, but whose appearance can be really jarring the first time you hear this album. This song also features Joe Beza from Saccharin Trust, who drops some acid-drenched guitar worthy of Carlos Santana. The track 42992 is a furiously frenzied instrumental throwdown. Album Ender, The Cliffs Thrown Down, sends this album out on a quiet mic spiel with very weird lyrics and very pretty guitar from it. All in all, this album is the least satisfying listen of all five Firehose LPs. But Firehose was mainly known as a live act. They played over 900 dates in their existence. That's why there was such a big gap between albums. You know, most bands tour to promote the album. Mike Watt once said that Firehose put out albums to promote their tours. And with that in mind, I have to mention, one of my favorite releases by them is the Totem Pole EP. This is a live EP that eats like an LP. It's 20 minutes of material, seven songs total, two Firehose songs, five covers. The band turn in blistering live performances of tracks by Blue Oyster Cult, Public Enemy, The Butthole Surfers, Super Chunk, and Wire. My favorite cover on the whole album is Public Enemy's Sophisticated Bitch. I'm going to put a link to that track below because it's such a gloriously faithful rendition. You would not think it would be possible for a power trio to put out that song and have it be legit, but it is. And Ed's guitar work on that? Come on. Crazy. The sheer variety of the band's cover tells you everything you need to know about the musical ability of Firehose's members. So I think any exploration of Firehose is incomplete without checking out their live stuff. So get on that. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive on Firehose. If you did, please do me a favor and be sure to subscribe. And I will see you next week with a lot more cool stuff.